Hi, welcome to DevOps Dialogues by Dell Technologies. My name is Ryan Walner, and today we're going to be talking about Kubevert. So first, what is Kubevert? Kubevert is a way for you to run virtual machines on Kubernetes infrastructure right next to your pods. And how this is done varies depending on which distribution you're using. So if you're on an upstream Kubernetes, you're going to be using the Kubevert uh, project. But if you're, say, on OpenShift, uh, it's called Container Native Virtualization, but uses Kubevert as the upstream project. So the architecture for how Kubevert works is an addition to the way that Kubernetes works. So you have a master node in a Kubernetes architecture, or you might have three for high availability or more, but that has an API server. That API server um, is going to service the scheduling and talk with the controllers for your pods and everything else that you're normally working with Kubernetes. Now, when Kubevert is deployed to your Kubernetes infrastructure, you have a Vert API, which provides the API that understands the objects, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, for scheduling and creating your virtual machines. And you have the uh, Vert controller. That Vert controller is the thing that understands what your worker nodes look like, what types of CPU is available on them, and um, schedules to those nodes to actually run those uh, virtual machines. So this Vert API has and understands a couple different CRDs. The CRDs or custom resource definitions uh, that you'll be using is a VM, which is more like a high level uh, CRD, a lot like a stateful set of one, um, which controls a virtual machine instance or VMI. And if you wanted to run more than one virtual machine, you would be working with a uh, virtual machine instance replica shell. which basically runs a bunch of different virtual machine images or instances. Either way, the main CRD that's going to be defining your virtual machines and how they run and how they're configured is this virtual machine instance. So as a user, whether you're an admin or end user that has access to the Kubevert technology, you could use kubectl or something called vertctl to instruct to run VMs, deploy them, send them to the API. So say you wanna run a Red Hat Enterprise Linux or Ubuntu or even a Windows VM. It would start with by defining this virtual machine or virtual machine instance, depending on which level you're working at. There's a lot of configuration in there in terms of what size you want to use, uh, what operating system, where you're gonna get the operating system image from, what volumes you want to attach to those, how it's configured for network, and that can be quite complicated. So there's also the idea of templates, which is sort of a predefined version of a VMI that is a known working configuration for different types of operating systems. In either case, you define a VMI or use a template and customize it. You will uh, start with those uh, configurations and submit that to the Vert API. That Vert API then um, is watched by the Vert controller. And when a new object for a virtual machine is con configured, it will say, all right, I have a new VM um, and here's the configuration for it. Um, and I'm gonna go look for a worker node that's appropriate to run this virtual machine on. Now, the other components that we have to be aware of for um, Kubevert is the daemon sets that run on the worker nodes. So there's something called a vert handler. And this runs on every worker node. That vert handler will be the thing that basically gets the scheduling request from the vert controller. Now, obviously it's not gonna deploy three VMs if you just want one, um, but it will talk to the vert handler and that daemon set is running on every uh, worker node. There's also something called a uh, node labeler that is part of the kubevert um, deployment, which labels these different worker nodes depending on the types of CPUs available, KBM info that's available so that it kind of can choose the right uh, worker node uh, with the right kind of hardware for your virtual machine. 
Once the vert handler gets the request, it will hand that off to a vert launcher. If you haven't uh, noticed, a lot of things are named vert so you know what you're dealing with, but that vert launcher is going to be the responsibility, uh, the thing responsible for actually creating the VM, talking with the libvert um, APIs and management libraries, uh, as well as um, instructing QAMU to actually do the hardware virtualization uh, component to that virtual machine. So vert launcher will then create that uh, through libvert and QEMU uh, will create that VM. And something to note here is that each VM is run in its own pot. So really what's happening here is that this, these components that I just drew out here are running in their own pod, which means that the infrastructure that you're used to using on Kubernetes, like CNI for networking, or even CSI for PVCs, uh, even the scheduling components, right, are, are just a way for um, the vert handler to take advantage of those existing use cases, meaning that it works as it always would, even if you're using pods and containers. Think of the vert handler as sort of a kubelet for VMs in a way, right? So the kubelet still exists here. We're not replacing the kubelet with a vert handler, but the vert handler is specific to running those uh, virtual machines. Now, the nice part about this is that if you wanted to um, you know, have a web server running on this VM on port 80, that would also be available as a service. You can configure services. And if you had a pod, that was running a container workload, a traditional, well, I'll say traditional container workload, but just a non-VM workload, that container can benefit from the service discovery of Kubernetes by um, finding that service available on the Kubernetes infrastructure. So this really allows you to run both your virtual machines and your containers on the same infrastructure, even, even on the same nodes or on the same cluster. The nice part about that is you can take what has always worked in virtual machines as um, and migrate it to sort of your Kubernetes or OpenShift infrastructure and run it where your Kubernetes are running. So it really provides that sort of onboarding and um, modernization, but you don't necessarily have to change something that's not working, right? Kubert isn't trying to um, you know, get applications that run in pods to now run in VMs. You use the tool that's right for the job. Um, the other thing that is uh, to keep in mind is the type of operating system that you're running in a VM. Now, whether that's um, you know Windows or RHEL, as we mentioned before, there's various ways to get that operating system image onto that VM. Kubevert allows you to use a couple different mechanisms. Um, one is you know, traditionally pixie booting and having an image or repository nearby that can be used. Um, they also allow you to use ephemeral container images that are basically special container images that have sort of a, a root disk image for that virtual machine that Kubevert can use. Or you can provide um, a URL. So this can be a, a www dot, um, URL that basically is a repository for uh, operating system images that something called uh, the CDI pulls in um, and creates a data volume for um, that root disk. So that can be reused across uh, various VMs and templates. So the nice part here is that you are now have the ability to use your kubectl commands just as you would with your pods and your VMs. You have uh, the ability to use uh, CSI, so Container Storage Interface, which is a part of Kubernetes um, already, which has a, a mechanism for using um, drivers to talk to external storage systems, which means you can provision volumes to your VMs. Say you wanted to run a database on that uh, virtual machine, you could use a PVC as you normally would with an, a pod in a container through the CSI uh, mechanisms and through your favorite external storage system to use that PVC for persistent storage. So in recap, Kubevert is a way for you to run virtual machines on your Kubernetes infrastructure, whether you're running it on upstream Kubernetes with Kubevert or through container native virtualization on OpenShift. 
It allows you to use VertCTL and KubeCTL, the tools you've been already using and um, the infrastructure you've already been using for Kubernetes and cloud native applications and containers, and run those virtual machine applications right next to your pods and containers and allow them to communicate and onboard and uh, have a space to grow for your um, virtual machines and container infrastructure together. So I hope that was a uh, good recap of KubeVert and stay tuned for more.